Good afternoon. It's July 13th, 2013. And in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how I came up with a workaround on the air conditioning clutch for a 2005 Subaru Forester. Now, if you've done any research on the internet, you'll find that over time, as the air conditioning clutch wears, the gap between the wearable, wearable surface of the clutch and the pulley increases. And the increase in gap makes it more difficult for the coil to pull, pull in or engage that clutch when power is applied. And that was the situation on my car. When the car was cold, or you start, you, you first started using the air conditioning, it, it worked fine. And after 10, 15 minutes, or on a really hot day, after five minutes, when the clutch disengaged, it would not re-engage, and all you would get would, was hot air out of the, the vents. Now I did investigate having the compressor replaced, but because of the, of the age of the car and the miles, I have uh, almost 156,000 miles on the car, I really couldn't justify spending the money to replace the uh, compressor. And unfortunately, the way things are today, you can't replace just the clutch. You have to replace the, con uh, the whole compressor. And when you replace the compressor, they want you to replace the expansion valve and all these other components that they want you to replace uh, when you change out the compressor. And I understand that. And this is just my humble opinion. I fault the manufacturer for this. You should be able to come in here and adjust that clutch gap in 10 or 15 minutes tops. To have to replace a compressor assembly just because of a increased gap is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what we're doing today. It's just, it makes me feel bad. This took me about 15 or 20 minutes to do this. And here's what you'll need. First of all, you're going to need some thin wire. Now, this is some magnet wire I had. It's 23 gauge. It measures about 20 thousandths in diameter. You're going to need a pair of wire nippers, uh, a pair of needle nose pliers, uh, a set of feeler gauges, and some JB Quick epoxy. Now, this is just what I did. If you come up with a better solution, then please put it out on the, oh, YouTube. I did a lot of searching, and I could not come up with a fix for this. So far, this seems to be working fine. I've had no problems with the cycling of the compressor. So again, this is just what I did. You'll need about three feet of wire, and that's just so it, it can be a little easier to work with. Um, and I'll show you the finished, I won't call it a repair, how about workaround? I'll show you the finished workaround, and then I'll show you how I did it. Uh, the best I can. If you look down on here, here are these springs that will return this outer uh, clutch ring to the neutral position once the compressor is disengaged. And right here you'll see a little blob and it, within that blob is some wire and uh, I put a little epoxy on top of it so the wire would not move around as this plate moves in and out. And likewise, you can see a little copper wire here and a little blob of epoxy. Now hopefully you can see this. I've taken a short length of that 23 gauge wire. And again, you can use whatever wire you wish. I just happen to have this and I thought about using some stainless steel wire. I was a little concerned that 
this being copper, it might flatten over time, but I really don't care. Uh, this is just something I, I wanted to try. So I shaped it like so, and I'll show you uh, what it looks like uh, assembled on the car. Now I hope you can see this. This I've taken that piece of wire and I've slid it in behind that spring. And the next thing you need to do is you take a small flathead screwdriver, you put it behind this spring, and you push that clutch in towards the pulley. Okay? Now this is going to be tough trying to do this with just holding the camera. I probably can't do it. But you, you push this in and then you move that wire towards the outside of the clutch ring. Here, here I've got my feeler gauge and this is a 13 thousandths uh, segment. And when I checked the gap before I started, I had almost a 32nd of an inch, and it was just too much. The, uh, the coil simply couldn't pull the, the clutch plate in. It was The gap was too great once it was hot. So you use the feeler gauge, and you keep moving that wire out until you get the gap that you're looking for. Okay, and then I looked on the web, and they were saying 11 to 10 to 12 thousandths. I went with 13 thousandths just because it, it seemed to work pretty good. And that's a, a, a nice 13 thousandths slip fit right in there. Okay, so you've done, done it in one place and you work your way all the way around this clutch. Each ear here you want to do the same thing. You push that clutch plate in with your screwdriver. You put the wire up behind it until you get the right gap. Then you just twist the wire. If you look real close you can see how I just twisted the wire. And then I bend it over and then I put some epoxy on it to hold it in position. And I think the epoxy, you're going to have to make sure that this stays here because once the clutch comes in, centrifugal force is going to want to push that wire towards the outside which would decrease the gap and you don't want that. All the wires are done and trimmed and epoxied in position. Now, I was able to get this gap down to six thousandths of an inch without too much effort. But from what I read, uh, you want at least eleven to thirteen thousandths because as things heat up, it's going to expand, and you don't want this clutch dragging. Um, and uh, I hope I haven't offended the purists out there, air conditioning specialists. I'm not an air conditioning specialist, but I, I needed to find a way, an economical way, to try to uh, get around uh, a poor design. And like I said, so far this uh, seems to do the trick. So have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.